guys, my name is Michael Sipos and I'm the UFIFIS Extension Florida Sea Grant Agent in Collier County. And today we're going to talk about and fillet the triple tail. So I've only filleted a couple of these, so follow me to learn how to do so. Read the description for more information uh, about this fish. I include a lot that I don't talk about in the video as I'm filleting as well as uh, complete the survey that's linked in the description as well. It helps us to find uh, the time that we, we spend uh, going out and doing the literature searches, uh, my personal time catching these fish, and uh, it really helps us do our job. So if you would do that, super appreciate it. And um, yeah, learn more about this fish. That's a favorite table fare to many. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the camera uh, closer to my hand so you can see what we're doing and we'll get started. Okay hey guys, so let's get started. So this fish, to give you an idea for scale, is 18 inches and 4 pounds. So the state record for a triple tail, the Florida state record, is 40 pounds and 13 ounces caught in four pierce. The world record is 42 pounds, 5 ounces in South Africa. And uh, the, the scientific name of this fish is Lobotes surinamensis. And um, the, the lobus uh, word in Latin, is it, it sort of translates to lobe, which sort of tells you uh, why, how these fish got their name. So the lobed anal fin, and then the lobed and elongated uh, second uh, dorsal fin right here uh, makes it look like it has three tail fins, so hence the triple tail name. Mm -hmm. So the Lobotidae family only actually has two members in it, the Atlantic triple tail and the Pacific triple tail, which are nearly identical. They have a global distribution in subtropical and tropical seas. They can be found in temperate waters, but more so in that tropical and subtropical area. But let's go ahead and get started on filleting them. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about these triple tail. So they are one of the favorite table fares of many fishermen out there. Um, they have uh, really thick scales, so if you want to use two different knives, you can. I'll probably use that on some other fish that I have in the cooler today. Um, but you want to sort of go across this uh, dorsal fin, or this uh, this dorsal fin right here. You can you can sort of lift uh, the dorsal fin, and you can see a space almost between the scales and that those spines right here. And that's where you want to get your knife in too so you don't um, you know you don't dull it up and you can go all the way up into that head area. So we are gonna go and find that little groove, make that incision cut upwards. So these are a very unique fish. They can be found inshore on channel markers or they can be found in you know pelagic kind of conditions. So I've seen these fish in a thousand feet of water off of the keys on a bamboo piling and I see a bamboo pole that when I jumped into the water just to look at them they swam underneath me to look for cover and uh, I actually caught this one underneath a light uh, inshore. So they're really associated with that structured environment and that's where their nickname as buoy fish or even sometimes eddy fish like the eddy of a backboat piling. Um, that's that's where they get their name. So I, I cut all the way up to the top of the head area. There's some meat over there. Uh, they have this triangular shaped head that sort of gets more pronounced as it gets older. Like their their face gets sort of smushed into like a tip, and their their, their head slants a lot more. So I'm gonna fillet this part, um, lifting it up ever so slightly, skimming that backbone. They have pretty tough ribs. I'm going to try to go over those ribs. You can go through them, but you know, you can also dull your knife out doing that. These fish are believed to grow pretty fast um, just because of that environment that they live in. If they live in a pelagic environment and they're sort of larvae, they could get consumed a little bit quicker. Um, so they, they're known to have, you know, developed fins at around uh, nine millimeters in length. Um, they, they live up to seven to ten years. FWC identified like a seven-year-old fish. I think that's the oldest one we have on record in Florida. There, there needs to be more research and more information known about the triple tail because um, they're, 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 they could be found anywhere from a dock piling to a crab buoy offshore to I've seen people see them in floating buckets and just lift a bucket and there's a triple tail inside there. So I'm going over these ribs, lifting up the fillet. And these fish are known to be some of the favorite table fare of 
uh, anglers out there, I've heard. So they have some information on spawning and I can include that in the description if you want to read it. There's some graduate research out there from ones I saw caught in Jekyll Island. But they're believed to have a spawning peak somewhere in July and they could spawn every three to five days or so. And it's thought that a, a 24 inch female uh, can produce about 4.5 to 5, 8 million eggs per season. So this is one fillet right here. And females become mature at around 17 and 19 inches in length, which corresponds to about one to two years old. While males uh, become mature at about 10 inches in length, so a lot smaller. So I gotta punch through these scales right here. Told you that this fish has some pretty thick scales and it can dull out a fillet knife. So try to find that little indent between that dorsal fin and where those scales start. And I'm outlining the shape of this fish. Going all the way up to the head. You don't want to waste any of these, this filet. It's super delicious. And then cutting down. I'm just going to start lifting it up. It might be easier to start doing that. So yeah, they, they, they know that they spawn. They think they spawn offshore because they find some larval triple tail um, on, on plankton toes and everything, but they also have seen females that have uh, pretty well-developed ovaries inshore, but those could be fish that sort of travel with the tide. Okay, so I'm lifting this fillet going above the ribs. Easier to do that than cutting through these, just the ribs. Skimming the bones with the tip of my knife. And with stone crab season, there's going to be a lot of people looking for triple tail because they like hanging out on those floating structures, channel markers, pilings, snook lights. Um, yeah, where they, they sort of sit there motionless, almost like a, like a piece of debris or a leaf. So sometimes people will overlook them, but you're passing up a really, really tasty fish. This is our filleted triple tail. I'm going to put it off to the side and start skinning these. So it helps to have a wider kind of knife because you want to have it sort of the, the width of that fillet because these are very deep bodied but compressed fish, so wide but um, not as not as wide this way. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and move this fillet to the edge of the table and remove the skin from the fillet. So these fish can be solitary, you can find them in groups. Um, you know, it really just depends on how large the structure is and where, where they're actually occurring. That's one fillet. This over here and do the other side. And that is the other fillet. So we're going to feel for those Y bones or the pin bones. Actually, yep, there's some right over here. You have to feel with your finger. You'd probably go about two or three inches into the fillet, cut on either side of that bone to remove them, and then you're golden. They, uh, they like eating shrimp, crabs, small fish, crustaceans. A lot of people tend to prefer uh, using a live shrimp for a bait. You know, they'll hit a jig pretty regularly. You just really want sort of a natural kind of appearance when you're presenting your bait to them. So you know, drifting it back to them rather than uh, trying to spook it with it. So, cut it along with each side of the boat right here. And trim up the fillet. We're good to go. So, there is our triple tail fillets. Uh, read the description. I'll include a lot more information in there. 
And uh, please take that survey to let us know how we did and what kind of in more information you want to see, different kind of species, suggestions. Really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, guys.